this is the final part 4 of this tutorial series, you can find the previous parts in the video description. In this exciting video, we will place objects around a circle and make them bounce or flash in like this. Here we go! Welcome back, now let's add some more details to our sci-fi head-up graphics. In this video I want to add more objects out here and make them bounce up like those rings, but individually. So I don't want them to bounce up from a zero scale from the center here. Uh, I want them to appear here and bounce in right here. And then the next one maybe over here and bounce in right here. You'll see what I mean in a second. First of all, let me create a new object in this collection. Maybe take another circle. Let's do, I don't know, hexagon. Go into edit mode. Uh, hit F to give it a surface. Scale it down. And I'm not going to bring it out here in edit mode. I'm, I'm keeping it in the center. With this circle in the center, first of all, I have to somehow find the locations out here that I want. Just like, you know, similar to these round dots and those lines, I have to figure out where I want my circles or my hexagons in this case and how many. So, of course, we have to, where are we going to put this? Maybe put it up here. So we have to instance this hexagon. It's called circle. I want to call it hexa. Okay. Instance the hexa. How many uh, should we put in here? Maybe 16. And then we have to figure out where to place them. So of course we could use some math, you know, sine and cosine to find locations on a circle with a certain radius, but there is a much easier way to do this. Animation nodes comes with a circle mesh node. And actually I just found it by hitting Ctrl A and putting in circle because I was looking for a node to calculate positions on a circle. That's the only thing here in animation node that gives me a circle and it creates a mesh. Now, I can always use a mesh info node to get the location of the vertices. Let's see where they are with a 3D viewer node. Plug in the vertices, make them big and red, and that's where they are. Here I can change the radius. Um, here I can change the radial loop count. So if I have a 16 instances, I probably want 16 locations. And I'm also going to take my camera, move it even, uh, move it up even further so that we have it all in our shot here. So these are the locations, but you can see there is an issue. This uh, circle mesh node creates um, like a triangle fan circle. So it creates a center point. We don't want the center point. Now let's look into this list of vertices here and maybe turn down this to, let's just start with eight for now. Now we're gonna use the information here because we can see that for eight points on our circle, the last one is always in the middle. This has the zero, zero, zero. So to remove this last point from our list of points, we just have to remove the last point with a list slice, uh, set it to length, take this list. Length should be eight because right now I'm using eight uh, points on the circle. And then we have a list of seven, or I mean, now we have a list of eight points. Before we had nine, and we removed the last point. So if we plug this into the 3D viewer, now we have the eight points on the circle and nothing in the middle. 
So now we didn't have to do sine, cosine, multiply by radius and all that kind of stuff. We just have eight points on a circle and we can change the radius here. We can change the amount here. Of course, this eight and this eight, these, these numbers here have to match up. So now let's plug in our objects. We have a list of 16 objects. Now I'm just going to plug in this objects list into the uh, radial loops count, which gives me a get length count uh, node or get, get length node. Perfect for what I need here and for here so that it matches up. So now we have 16 points on the circle. And let me remove this. Now, what do we have to do? We have to move these 16 objects to, to these locations. Okay, let's do that. So we would start with a transform output node, plug in our objects, change the location to these locations, remove that. And we already have our hexa, which doesn't have a material yet. Uh, let's make it blue. And now we have 16 dots on the circle. I can hide my center hexa, the or original one here. And this is cool. Now let's try and plug this into our subprogram, the bounce in subprogram. Let's take those objects and make them bounce in. And oh no. There is a problem. They're all in the center now. Why is that? Well, same reason as what I explained in the last video with creating or chaining uh, offsets. Uh, with one transform output node, we only change the one location rotation and scale of an object. We can't you know, we're not uh, placing them uh, at these locations here and then making them bounce in. We're doing it basically all at once. So we're, we're just bouncing them in from the center point. So this sub program here now uh, destroys the work that we've done here with placing our hexagons around in a circle. So this is not, this doesn't work. Um, instead, we're gonna have to do what we did over here. We have to chain transformations with a transform matrix node. So we can remove this object transform output. That doesn't work. We have to compose a matrix. So matrix compose a location and that's the location. And then essentially we can do a matrix an object matrix output for whoops for these objects and we can transform them uh, to these locations so we get this again but now we're gonna have to plug in our transformations into our bounce node somehow so we have to change our bounce in group here. The one that we've used to bounce in these circles. Because here we're using the initial transform. And instead of the initial transform matrix, we want to use this matrix that gives us the location here. So let's change our bounce in. Let's add a new input matrix list. We can hit N and over here, uh, where is it? On this node, we can move the matrix list up. Okay. Instead, like I said, instead of the initial transform here, let me place that up here. I'm going to plug in these matrices. So of course now I broke the circles, um, the, the rings here, but I can now uh, up here do this and then I have 
a list of objects trans that I can transform using the sub program bounce in objects and those matrices. Of course, we have to figure out. Uh, we have to start maybe at 140. We want a delay of 5, a duration of 10. So this is the animation. And we're already getting bouncing in hexagons here. A duration of 10 is probably not long enough. Ah, now it works. Okay, we're bouncing in the hexagons. Cool. Wow, this... We have to start at, I don't know, 50. <laughs> okay. So, maybe here it would be a good solution to... Maybe we bounce them in from a larger scale. What does that look like? Yeah, that looks kind of cool. So big and then small okay hit play <laughs> yeah that looks kind of interesting they flash in because they're so big because I set the scale to two now now what happened to our rings our rings aren't bouncing anymore at all because we took out this uh, matrix here now how can we make it usable again for both uh, scenarios? We would have to switch between either use the in initial transform or use the matrices plugged in. Let's just put that in here quick. We need a Boolean uh, switch. Mm, no, we don't need a switch. We need a Boolean compare. So we're going to compare the length of this matrix list. Let's do that. Let's get a list. Where is it? List, list, list. Um, get length. So if we have matrices plugged in here, the length of this list is going to be... greater than... Zero. If the length of the matrix matrices list is greater than zero, then we need a switch. Then we either take the matrix list, and if it isn't, we take the initial transform list, and this is the output for this matrix. Wow, we have plenty of lines here. Let's see if we can clean this up a little. Okay, so uh, let's see if it works. Rings are bouncing in. And hexagons are bouncing in. Cool. So again, just a quick recap. I'm just checking if we plugged in matrices because for our rings, uh, where is it? Up here. For the rings, we're not plugging in matrices. We just want them, uh, the ring animation to use the initial location, rotation, and scale. So if there is a matrix, at least one in here, if the get length is greater than zero, then let's use the list. If it isn't, let's use the initial transform. And this is the basis for our offset matrix for the bounce in animation that we do in here. So our bounce in animation loop has become even more useful. By now you know how to put all of what we created in this video into its own group, call it bounce in on circle, so that it can then be reused. I have done that and added even more useful features to this subprogram, like being able to transform the circle mesh, for example, to rotate the entire circle. Have the elements rotated correctly so that they aren't all facing in the same direction, but follow the angle of the position on the circle. Be able to rotate each individual element and of course expose the parameters of the bounce in subprogram as well. You can support this channel and help make more Blender tutorials in the future at Patreon 
a blend file of what we have created in this tutorial series can be downloaded by all Silver Monkey patrons. And the final version, including this complete animation with the extra features, is available to all Gold Monkey patrons. Did you find this series useful? Did you learn one or two new skills? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Check out the other videos on my channel. There will be more coming soon. Have a good one. Crispy out.